Hello all. We are here in another very important episode of Doctor's Talk. Today we have with us Dr. Ashutosh Karg. Dr. Ashutosh completed his MBBS from UCMS New Delhi and is right now final year resident at BLK Hospital where he is doing his DNB in family medicine. Doctor, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. Doctor, today we are going to talk about a very important topic, you know, with in which there is some confusion. The topic is related to heart. I get to hear that you know the following person you know passed away because of a heart attack caused due to COVID. Now, what is this whole mystery behind heart and its relation to COVID? Today, I'm going to ask you questions directly related to heart and COVID. So, the first question, doctor, is that why does the COVID mainly affect the lungs? To give us a to give background to the uh, audience, can you tell us about the relation between COVID and lungs? So the COVID virus, what is called the SARS coronavirus two, it's a virus that goes through your entire body. So it's not as if it's restricted to a particular organ. It goes to the entire body, and it sort of at attacks every part of your body. The reason why we tend to see more lung manifestation than any other manifestation is because of its route of spread, that is respiratory. And uh, there are certain receptors in the lung. They're called ACE two receptors. Uh, so they are abundant in the lung. So combining these two reasons, we tend to see more of lung cases. But logically speaking, it affects almost all the organs in the body. Okay, you know, you already answered this question, but I'll repeat it for the sake of the audience. Can COVID nineteen have a life-threatening effect on essential organs apart from the lung? So here the word is life-threatening. Definitely, it uh, once it gets into your lungs through the respiratory route from uh, via the blood vessels, it goes to the other organs as well. and when we talk about vital organs we are essentially talking about four organs the heart the brain the liver and the kidney and yes it goes to all the four lung uh, all the four organs it is just that the lung has a huge capacity even if it is 75% damaged we can still work with 25% of it so that is why we don't tend to see too much disturbance when it comes to the liver also the lung is also comparatively huge so it takes time for it to be completely damaged again the same with the kidney now the two other organs which i did not mention here are the heart and the uh, brain even a small insult to the heart and brain can result in manifestation that are very uh, in your face they just precipitate very quickly so you know i'll just come to the next question because you already started to answer it what is the effect of covid 19 on a person's heart fine so the heart like any other organ in your body needs blood needs nutrition needs oxygen for itself to function like any other organ it supplies blood to the other organs but it needs that blood itself also so one reason why the heart gets affected is because the virus due to certain reasons has a clotting effect in your blood vessels it tends to clog them it tends to form clots now if those clots form in the vessels going to your liver then your liver will be affected if those clots form in the vessels going to the kidney your kidney will be affected similarly if those clots form in the vessels that are going to the heart your heart will be affected and that is what is called as myocardial infarction or as angina the the classic presentation wherein a patient comes with chest pain and that is what the lay people call heart attack the second thing which is far more common is what we call as myocarditis that means is the heart is a pump so that pump the pumping action is done by the muscles and this virus infiltrates those muscles and if that virus instead of going to those blood vessels that we just talked about and if they don't work fine then that is what is that is what we are calling as myocarditis the muscles are getting affected directly okay so these are okay. the two manifestations one is the heart attack and the other is the myocarditis are people with high cholesterol high blood pressure and a family history of heart trouble at a greater risk of you know effect on the heart due to covid so you have to talk about the relation of covid with heart with respect to all the other factors which are there before sir uh, that's a very simple question any virus that has a propensity to affect your heart plus you have other risk factors in place a family history bad cholesterol hypertension diabetes obesity smoking so all these will just add up it's just a accumulation of various risk factors one of which is covid 19 so yes people who have these uh, risk factors in place 
they are at higher risk of getting uh, heart disease worsening so you spoke about two kinds of heart attacks so you know have there been cases you know as you are in a covid ward as you deal with a lot of patients on a daily basis have there been cases a lot of cases of normally a, a large amount of cases of people having heart attacks while suffering from covid 19 i want to say abnormally so but yes we have patients who tend to have risk factors for it they have developed heart the uh, much more common than heart attack is myocarditis heart attack is relatively less common but in covid 19 so can you explain myocarditis, myocarditis again doctor so we were talking about two things heart attack and carditis heart attack is when the vessels to your heart that are supplying your heart are blocked they are clogged because clots form so that is what is that is what precipitates as chest pain patients come come to you with chest pain the second thing is myocarditis in which the virus instead of going through those vessels directly goes to the muscles so those muscle doesn't beat properly you are not able to send blood to your various organs you are feeling very uh, restless so all these are manifestations of myocarditis which is far more common so is it some kind of inflammation that is happening to other muscles which is also happening to the heart is it a cytokine yes, yes. reaction as you had mentioned earlier definitely in the lung also whatever manifestation that you are seeing is a response by your body it is like if a country is attacked by another country and that country is trying to save itself then in that process it will also result in some collateral damage collateral so damage. that is the collateral damage that is the inflammation so you know uh, if a person is covid infected doctor what can he do in order to monitor the overall health of vital organs as at that time the person is you know focusing on oxygen focusing on fever focusing on other things so you know there's a chance that there may be a neglect to other vital organs so how can he you know make sure he takes the holistic approach to health at the time when he's infected so at this point of time number 1 do you so at this point of time we are first concerned about people who have risk factors that can land them up in hospital or in icu do they have heart disease do they have obesity do they have diabetes do they have hypertension do they have dysfunctional liver and kidney these patients we need to enter aspects of these organs so if they have diabetes control your sugar if you have hypertension control your bp if you have heart disease then titrate your medication if that is required so that is one thing now say for example we have a patient who has none of these problems so for these patients i would say if you have a mild infection meaning your your lung is clear there's nothing in your lung your saturation spo2 is fine you may be febrile but your cough is not too much troubling your appetite is somewhat okay in that sense the only thing is try to sleep well you rest well you monitor your spo2 and temperature if it is needed if you get a fever if you are feeling feverish you maintain your monitor your uh, temperature other than that there is not there is no need to go into any specifics there is no need to be very pedantic about uh, what should i do that will actually make you worry more okay okay now you know you we spoke about during covid there's also some concern regarding post covid so post covid are there chances of heart trouble what is the best way to monitor it yeah, there are there are post covid there are many people who are reporting palpitations palpitation meaning the feeling of abnormally fast heart rate so yes many people are reporting this for these patients it would be beneficial that they do contact their doctor they monitor their heart rate and very importantly rest as much as possible because that itself will reduce your heart rate when you are working too much when you are stressing or when you are mentally stressed you are bound to increase your heart rate and if your heart rate goes beyond a certain limit say it's going consistently above 130 150 there is a chance that you can actually take your heart into an air arrhythmia arrhythmia meaning it goes outside your normal rhythm we don't want that to happen we don't want the heart to fail so yes they should monitor their heart rate that is one and two rest as much as possible if you are not able to bring a, bring down your heart rate if the palpitation are still continuing do contact your doctor they have we have medications for it and they are beneficial so you know to monitor this uh, high rate of heart the best way i think would be a pulse oximeter do you agree pulse oximeter pulse? yes relationship between covid and you know other allied very common north indian uh, diseases you know is there a relation between covid hypertension diabetes and heart troubles should these issues So we looked at holistically. Do we have to look them holistically? You already answered it. Let's please summarize it once for the welfare of our viewers. See, whenever you visit a doctor, the doctor is not really concerned about just COVID. 
they will always treat you as one individual then extend the history to your family extend the history to your near and dear ones and that is how they derive the diagnosis that is how they come to the conclusion this is the uh, test that i want to do you on you this is the treatment i want to give you so it's never as if you will call me and say i have covid and i will rattle down the treatment to you i will always ask you 10 15 other questions related to what you have from before what other problems you have and only then i will treat okay. so yes always holistically can there be any preventive measure that people who have normal heart and who have not been affected by covid can he like anticipate some heart trouble and take some prevention right now on social media on the news especially in the hindi news media section there are uh, uh, medications like coronil that are being sold there are treatments related to yoga that are being told now i am not an expert in either ayurveda or yoga or of other matter any of the naturopathies so i am not going to speak about them in my experience there is no evidence based studies related to any of them so yes i can't support them as far as i have seen there is no prevention method except you wear mask you get vaccinated you maintain distancing there is really no other way steam you shouldn't be using steam we have covered it in a previous video yes cannot prevent you from covid 19 it can actually harm you it can actually burn your uh, in inside Yes, yes. The inside cells can be burned with steam. So you know all these uh, WhatsApp forwards that we are getting for the prevention of COVID, for prevention of any trouble to our body in this Corona times are overwhelming, and we must always verify each news, consult our doctor who's a qualified yes. person to judge, and then take action. Is that right, doctor? And yes, and if you have, and those viewers who are seeing it, uh, this video right now, if you have a problem contacting a doctor. then on this channel you can post your query if it is possible we can answer your question but please please don't treat yourself don't go by uh, newspaper or social media headlines that is not how medicine works that is not how science works okay so as doctor has said please put your questions down in the comments below so that we can read them we can answer them in the next video or we can directly provide you the answers as we have already provided to a lot of people you know who have asked us questions the next question you know one of the last questions is is diet and nutrition a part of education of a doctor should these be integrated with the treatment protocols for patient uh, again this is combining the earlier question the holistic question unfortunately we are not trained in nutrition doctors of today because this this syllabus is just too much although yes it is covered slightly in our undergraduate years but no we are not trained to be nutritionists so i can't really draw up a nutrition chart for someone but yes there are certain principles when it comes to nutrition for example we basically look at two things we look at carbohydrates protein fats and vitamins and minerals so these are the five things that we generally look at so yes doctors are capable of understanding what in your diet should be increased or decreased there are uh, services available on the internet because the base principle is very clear to us doctors so even if we may not know the details we can always go in the internet search according to your specific problem and guide you so it's not that difficult today it's very easy to guide nutrition using the internet absolutely and do you know to add to what doctor has said there's a doctor called the doctor michael gregor who's written a book how not to die and he has a website called nutritionfacts.org the link is down below in the description of this video so dr ashutosh you know today we have covered some ground with respect to the heart you know i would request you to give this message to the people right now who are watching this video as to what what should they do to have good health in these challenging times so right now the only thing is mask 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 vaccine 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 distance 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 stay home as much as possible try to be in contact with your friends your family members if they are far away it's very important that if you are living alone in a city or in a town please maintain some kind of communication because it is taking toll on our mental health as well it's not just about our physical health so please be in communication with others have a video call done it's very easy in metro cities to get an internet even in tier 2 cities just take care of your mental health as far as physical health is concerned i think people are much more aware than a uh, layman today okay okay thank you thank you doctor we have covered important issues of the heart and you have given a lot of good advice to all the viewers watching this video i thank you very much and let's see you in the next video thank you so much